Novo Nordisk is worth more than Ghana. Imagine if Novo Nordisk was a Ghanaian company. Hi everyone, welcome to my science journey. This time we are privileged to host Dr. Yao Bediako, a Ghanaian immunologist and entrepreneur. He obtained a PhD from Northwestern University in the US and he did a postdoctoral, postdoctoral fellowship in Kenya and London. In 2020, he founded Yamachi Biotech to develop novel diagnostic and therapeutic targets for cancer that work uniformly well, irrespective of genetic background. Uh, Yao is a 2021 Palestas Juma Science Leadership Fellow. Uh, this is from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and he's also a fellow of the Ghana Young Academy and an affiliate member of the African Academy of Sciences. In 2022, he was recognized as one of the top 40 and 40 business people in Ghana. And in January of 2023, he was selected as one of the top 100 most influential Africans by the New African Magazine. We are honored to be hosting Yao today, uh, who will be sharing his story with us and, you know, sort of just a conversation. Um, I think I will jump uh, straight in uh, and probably just starting light. Maybe you could speak to us about, you know, your hobbies, your leisure activities that you do other than science. <laughs> we can start from that position. Um, okay, um, I don't have that much time these days for uh, for leisure. Um, anybody who's trying to start any kind of business, especially a startup, um, knows that. But I, I enjoy, well, I play golf um, when I have time. Um, I enjoy that. I... I like watching sports. So right now the Olympics is great TV time for me because, you know, I can sit and watch anything from shooting to, you know, I mean, I, I really doesn't matter what the sport is. I seem to find it relaxing, but particularly enjoy the gymnastics and, um, um, and the athletics. So looking forward to cheering on Kenya. Uh, okay. when it comes to athletics, when it comes to athletics, I'm Kenyan because, um, you know, Ghana doesn't typically represent that much football. Uh -huh. I, I support Ghana, but, uh, for athletics, I am a, I'm a, an unofficial Kenyan, so looking forward to see what Kenya can do in, in the athletics. But yeah, so that's what I tend to like to do. Yeah, so we probably should adopt you in Kenya as well. Yes, yes, well. yes, 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 yes. All right, all right, that's great. Um, So just jumping into the, you know, the important, okay, that's also important, but jumping into the conversation, uh, maybe let's start by you telling us about your, a bit of your education background uh before you know founding in machi biotech i mean i've talked about a bit, a bit of it in the bio but maybe you could touch on a few things sure um so yeah i completed most of my high school education in ghana um, but then moved to the us for undergrad and then continued on to a phd um, as you mentioned i did two postdocs my first postdoc was in kilifi at the welcome trust center there can we welcome um, and then I continued for a second postdoc at the Francis Crick Institute in London. Um, in both places, I was focused on malaria immunology. So a lot of my my PhD was in T cell development, T cell immunology. So, but then for my two postdocs, I focused primarily on infectious disease immunology, looking at malaria. <laughs> Excuse me. And then in twenty nine, in twenty nineteen, returned to Ghana. Um, initially to WACBIP, which is actually what I'm, the cloth I'm wearing today. So I'm faculty at the University of Ghana. I'm a fellow at WACBIP, which stands for the West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens. Um, and it is from here that I began to sort of develop the idea for Yamachi. And so now I'm sort of adjunct faculty at the university, but full full time CEO at Yamachi. Great, great. And I think you mentioned that you were doing malaria immunology. So how did you move from malaria immunology into cancer research? So my, as I said at the beginning, my training is in mm -hmm. T cell immunology. So my, my yeah. PhD training was, was quite general. Um, I was studying how T cells develop, how T cells um, um, mediate immunity. So I mm -hmm. consider myself, as far as my training goes, I consider myself to be a cellular and molecular immunologist. Um, okay. moving, moving to, to Africa for my postdocs, obviously malaria is a very big, you know, big, big presence in yeah. Africa. And so yeah. I, I moved into infectious disease immunology, but, mm -hmm. um, it's also true that non communicable disease are also rising rapidly in Africa now. So I began to feel the need to broaden my immunology to begin to consider non communicable forms of disease and particularly mm -hmm. cancer. So it wasn't too much of a stretch. Um, 
fundamentally because immunology applies to both infectious and non-infectious disease. All right, all right, that sounds great. So. Uh, any other, you know, reason for diving into cancer research other than that? Or well, that's just purely it? Um, well, I think my, I also have a personal connection to cancer. My, my, I lost my father to cancer in 2008. And so obviously that, that I tightened my interest in cancer. Um, mm -hmm. But really, my, my, my desire to begin to pursue a career trying to do something about cancer really was born out of well, partly that experience, but also the recognition that across mm -hmm. Africa, we are mm -hmm. undergoing what is classified as an epidemiological transition, where yeah. our life expectancy is lengthening because we are beginning yeah. to reduce the burden of infectious disease. There's still a big burden, but it is lower than it was 10 years ago. But we have mm -hmm. a very rapidly rising NCD burden. And so our science needs to begin to expand to include both infectious and non-infectious. So that was, I guess, mm -hmm. Um, you know, from an academic or or from a conceptual frame point of view, that was why I began to broaden my my scope. All right, all right, that's yeah, you know, that's great. Uh, I think David is saying the network is not stable, so I'm not sure whether it's your network, David, because uh, I think I can hear Dr. Well, so Dr. I'm just going to use Dr. Rich is a Swahili name. I think I can yes, hear him clearly. Uh, probably one person can confirm that they can also hear us. Uh, okay. His network. We can hear him so well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, just proceeding with the co conversation, uh, Dr. Harry. So, why did you decide to go back to Africa? Why? Why did you, you know, decide to start a biotech um company in Africa? You know, um, you know, just aside the fact that you're African, you know, can you tell us the reason why? Why? Why Africa? Well, I mean, I think that you've just given the best reason, right? I'm African and um, home is home. So, I mean, you asked two questions. You asked, first of all, why I came back to Africa. And I think yeah. why I came back to Africa is not necessarily the same reason why I, I started Yamachi. So I can answer yeah. them separately. But okay. to be honest, why I came back, to, the simplest answer to why I came back to Africa is because I'm African and Africa is my home. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, even as a young person growing up, I had observed examples my own my own father you know relocated back after studying abroad um and i was i've always been determined that i wanted to spend my most productive years doing something in africa i didn't want to be a statistic of the brain drain um however it was easier said than done um yeah. it's very difficult to establish yourself in a thriving research career in africa um so it took me a long time i mean i was out of africa for well out of africa for 12 years then you know but out of ghana for 19 years yeah. um so so that was so moving back to africa was very important to me from an identity perspective an idea that i wanted to contribute to try to do something to move africa forward why i started yamachi is probably a, a result of a recognition that we needed to do more than just academic science in africa mm -hmm. so when i first moved back my mm. thinking was very much aligned with academic research. That is what yeah. I knew. That is what I had been trained in. So yeah. I joined, you know, when I moved to K K Kilifi, I was a postdoc. Then I went yeah. to the UK. Then I came back to Ghana as faculty in the university. I was very much focused on building an academic career. But okay. a little ways in, I realized that training, you know, academic institutions are built to train. WACBIP, yeah. where I came into work, is a training institution primarily that does research. But the question then is, where should all our trainees go? We train these African students and they get masters, they get PhDs, they do postdocs, but where are they going to go? And um, if you look at Europe and North America and in Asia, a lot of people don't stay in academia. A lot of life science PhDs end up in industry or in other careers. Um, and industry is where innovation, you know, really matures. You know, products come out of industry. Products do not come out of academia. Academia does yeah. the foundational initial research, but yeah. no medicine, even as if we think about COVID and the AstraZeneca vaccine is a great example. AstraZeneca vaccine was a collaboration between Oxford and AstraZeneca. Without yeah. AstraZeneca, there would be no mass production of that vaccine. Yeah. Um, and so I felt Africa needs a biotech industry. And yeah. who better to start it than African scientists? Um, and so after a lot of sort of thinking and agonizing, I felt 
you know, it came down to a situation where I've had this idea. I cannot shake the idea. If I don't do something about it, I may live with regrets for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. The worst situation for me would be one of my students would decide to start a company and, you know, I would sit back and think, man, I should have tried. So it yeah. got to a point where I figured um, I should give it a go. Um, and that's why I started your Oh, amazing. Amazing. Um, and, you know, speaking about your match Biotech, um, how is it working towards addressing challenges? I know you mentioned that, you know, you're trying to do cancer innovation, you know, to cater for different genetic backgrounds. But, you know, are you able to share how you guys are doing that? Or is this something that, you know, <laughs> should be kept in the, you know, the box for now? No, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, I think I can take a step back and say, you know, ultimately, Yamachi is seeking to diversify precision oncology. That is one of our taglines. Yeah. Um, and within that statement, hopefully you realize that there's a, you know, we state the problem. The problem is currently oncology research is not very diverse. It's primarily yeah. conducted in North America, in Europe, a little bit in Asia now. But most mm -hmm. of what has been learned has been learned primarily from people of European ancestry, which mm -hmm. means that the precision tools, we, we're in the age of precision medicine, right? So targeted yeah. therapies. Many of mm -hmm. these therapies have largely been developed from studies done in people of European ancestry. And there is growing evidence that they do not always perform as well in non-European populations. Yeah. Yeah. So what Yamachi wants to do is to change that. Now, our unique approach is to say the African continent mm -hmm. is potentially the key to the diversification of I would say all human research, but in our case, oncology research. Yeah. And yeah. the reason being the African continent is the most genetically diverse human population. Evolutionarily, yeah. it is where all human beings trace their origins from. So yeah. what we would like to do is, you know, what Yamachi is doing is yeah. currently building up rich multiomic database across mm -hmm. cancers, across mm -hmm. the African uh, mm -hmm. continent, which mm -hmm. would then provide the feed data that can mm -hmm. diversify drug discovery pipelines. In time, yeah. we have aspirations to do more and more of the drug discovery ourselves. But at this early phase, we really seek to become the go-to provider of, 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 of you know, diverse data mm -hmm. for big pharmaceutical and biotech companies who are leading the charge to develop new cancer drugs. So it's right. basically mm -hmm. providing African data so that Pharma no longer has an excuse mm -hmm. to leave us mm -hmm. behind, but providing the data um, in a way that also benefits the communities from which this data comes from. Yeah, that's that's actually very important, especially because, you know, we keep saying, you know, we don't have data, we don't have this, we don't have this. So, yeah, it's it's really great about, you know, what you guys are doing with the company. And, you know, speaking about, you know, the company, I mean, you're working with a team and maybe you have collaborators, partners. This morning I was browsing through LinkedIn and, you know, I saw uh, the president uh, from Bill and Melinda gets, uh, you know, sharing your, your story online. So maybe could you speak to us about, you know, the importance of, you know, working as a team collaboration partnerships and how these are coming together to be able to you know push forward um the company um well science science is at, by its nature collaborative or should i say good science requires collaboration right um mm -hmm. i think for anybody thinking about a career in science the best science is done in partnership and as science has evolved and you know, gotten more and more complex. You realize very quickly that you cannot be you cannot be a jack of all trades. You 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 cannot understand everything on your own. And some of the best scientific discoveries have been made in consortia or in groups of people. So at Yamachi, at the company level, we are a team. Um, as yes, very kindly for you to uh, you know quote the, uh, to to reference that article that just came out. Very grateful to the Gates Foundation, obviously, for highlighting our work. Um, I may be the one who is featured, but as I say in that article, Yamachi is not a one-man show. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I had an idea for a company, but I would not be anywhere without the team of mm -hmm. people across mm -hmm. all the sectors of our company. Um, yeah. So Yamachi is now more than 40 people strong, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and we have expertise in, in the life sciences, but we also have expertise in business and finance and engineering. Um, so all of those skills come together to make us work. Mm -hmm. Beyond mm -hmm. that, Yamachi on its own also cannot operate on its own. Yamachi has to partner. So we have built, and it's central to our 
our model is to build partnerships. So we've currently built partnerships in nine African countries, and our partners are primarily um, hospitals, you know, doctors who are treating patients with cancer. I would Mm -hmm. extend to say even the the cancer patients are also partner with us because they give consent for us to sequence their cancers, so they are partners. Um, And then we also have a host of academic partners in Africa and also in Europe and North America who we are working with um, to, you know, to 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 learn new techniques to advance the kind of work that we do, Um, because for Yamachi to remain on the cutting edge, we have to partner with those who are leading research globally. And so we seek to position ourselves strategically. Um, The best example of that is we are now, you know, we were we are part of a consortium that was awarded a cancer grant challenge um, grant uh, earlier this year. Um, This is a grant funded by the NIH in the US and Cancer Research UK. And we are one of, you know, more than 10 institutions that are working together to understand cancer in black people. And -hmm. there are institutions from North America, from Europe and then Africa. So Yamachi from, you know, from within our company and then outside our company, we're always looking to form you know, mutually beneficial. And I think that's the key thing, mutually beneficial. It's not just one side benefiting, but the idea is to have equity in these partnerships so that we can both achieve a common goal. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I love the idea of, you know, mutual uh, benefits from both from both teams, because I think a lot of people try to hold back their data because they feel like they are being used or they are being taken advantage of. Maybe that's the right word to use. But yeah, I think that's that's a very good uh, point. And, you know, uh, Dr. Ari, how now that you've spoken about these numerous partnership collaborations, institutions, in case someone is interested in joining a match about it, you know, what should they do? <laughs> And which, oh. which places do you absorb people? Um, well, we are, I mean, we're a small company, We, yeah. but we, you know, we, we, we hire strategically. Um, yeah. We have people working in, as I said, all sectors from um, from from basic science. So we ha- we've recently got had two new postdocs. So, you know, I hope in time to be able to re- recruit a, a, a cohort of postdocs who would help drive our work. We have more senior scientists. Um, we also have people with expertise in project management, um, clinical study management. Um, and then we have people who are software engineers. So we build software as part of what the work we do. And so we have developers who work with us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously supporting, you know, our, you know, support, support functions. So admin, mm-hmm. operations, finance, um, so all of those sectors have, you know, have room um, and, yeah. you know, God, God willing, as we keep raising money and we keep growing, we'll have opportunities. I'm very proud that we are, you know, we hire primarily young Africans, but not just Ghanaians. Um, we have many nationalities already represented in our team. Um, and part of my hope and my mission with Yamachi is to project what I believe is a new but more realistic face of Africa than what is typically seen in yeah. popular media, um, that Africa is young, vibrant, and excellent, um, and that's exactly. what we try to we try to portray. So there's there's room for anybody. Anybody who wants to work hard, wants to strive to do something exciting, um, wants to take on stress, <laughs> um, <laughs> is welcome at Yamachi as and when we have opportunities. Um, but we're also very keen to collaborate. You don't necessarily have yeah. to be an employee of Yamachi to work with Yamachi. Um, mm. If you're in a lab. Um, doing work in cancer or something, you know, not all our projects are cancer, I should add. So we do yeah. have projects in other areas at times, but we're very happy to, you know, to learn from and work with others in, 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 in you know, in, in academic labs and, and other labs around the world.